Parkrun, the weekly phenomenon that takes the UK and 21 other countries by storm every Saturday at 9am on the dot. If you are running like a wearing fanatic like myself, you're probably familiar with the protocols of this free volunteer round event. But if not, you may have missed that Parkrun has been a really hot topic within the media recently, being accused by some tabloids of having threatened the entirety of female sport, a rather extreme statement for something that started just as a fun run. Before we get into the nitty gritty details, let me take a minute to introduce myself. On this channel, we analyse the latest hot topics taking your social media feeds by storm. We cover everything from Love Island scandals to the latest things hitting supermarket shelves with a little bit of everything in between. But this week, we'll be delving into why the words parkrun has got people up and down the nation reacting like this. Ooh, <laughs> that's topic. a leading question. <laughs> Intrigued? Just said I'd hope. Welcome to Hot Topics with Hannah. Taking space in local parks and open spaces up and down the nation, Parkrun is an event that is open and accessible to anyone and everyone, no matter whether you sprint, jog, run or even walk the route. Founded by Paul Sinton Hewitt in South West London all the way back in 2004, Parkrun just began as a low-key time trial 5k with 13 runners and 5 volunteers. Parkrun has always been an inclusive community where people are encouraged to join in regardless of whether they're looking to up their speed or simply just get outside and enjoy a gallivant round a park with their friends. But now, this might have all just changed. Just last month, the head of communications at Parkrun posted a statement to Parkrun's website with some new changes that they'd be making to the event. In case you missed it, here's the key takeaway. Based on the conclusions and recommendations of the project group, we will no longer publish data such as most first finishers, sub-17 men and sub-20 women, and age grade or speed category records. Just six days after the announcement, the CEO of Parkrun Global, Russ Jeffries, posted an open letter stating the real reasons behind why they made these new changes. It was this comment in particular that got hundreds of park runners running to X or Twitter to rant about the new changes. Parkrun UK's tweet announcing this open letter got a whopping 296,000 views and 379 replies. Much of them not so supportive. But you might be wondering, what does all this kerfuffle actually mean? Well, let me explain. Now, although Parkrun is open and accessible to anyone and everyone, each individual runner's time is monitored in order to produce a results table at the end of each event. Within this, runners are ranked on their time, age and gender, producing an overall placing by age and sex. Previously, after each event, all of these statistics would be published on Parkrun's website for anyone and everyone to view. Now, this has all been scrapped. All course, gender and age-related statistics have been removed from Parkrun's website. All that remains is just the basic information of people's finishing times. Within the original statement, it was stated that there was a need to remove any barriers to registration and participation at Parkrun, and to present data in a way that isn't off-putting or imply that Parkrun is a race. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I can't really see people being put off going to Parkrun just because someone tops the leaderboard at Clapham Parkrun every week. After speaking to other parkrunners myself, it seems I'm not the only one. In Ross Jeffrey's open letter to parkrunners, he did confirm that while this data is being removed from Parkrun's website, it will still be available to runners, but in an individual email that will be sent out to them after the event has taken place. Here's an example from my last completed parkrun. See the ranking for my age category statistic? Now, I know what you're thinking. If this information is still available to park runners, why are they getting so riled up about it? Well, for many people, the opportunity to compare their stats with other park runners following the event was a real motivator to get down there every week, being a chance to see how they ranked compared to other runners on that Saturday. Joe Silver, 56, a regular at Colney Park Run, said just that. Upon being asked whether the new changes are for the better or the worse, Joe was quick to share that she's been put off running park run entirely given that she'll now be unable to see how other people in her age and gender category performed. But also, the timing of this announcement was a little bit suspicious, leading to some speculation about why this decision was really put in place. Upon signing up to Parkrun, participants were asked to declare their gender in order to allow for separate male and female rankings. However, as Parkrun enables people to self-identify their gender, male runners have previously been able to identify as female on account of their identity. As such, many female course and age category records have been broken by transgender males. Now, out of fairness for women, many people have called for Parkrun to change the way that people register their gender. 
Following a ban against transgender women competing in female categories, World Athletics and UK Athletics recommended that participants should be asked to declare their sex given at birth, rather than their gender identity. But despite a huge amount of uproar from female runners and female athletes who once again feel oppressed and treated unfairly within sport, Parkrun kept very quiet on the matter, failing to address any of the concerns made by women and parkrunners alike. And then, suddenly, Parkrun make the decision to remove all age and gender category related statistics from their website. Seems a little bit convenient, no? In fact, an article published by The Telegraph claimed that Parkrun has only introduced these changes after rejecting calls for it to stop allowing entrants from self-identifying their gender. And Parkrunners themselves were quick to notice the timing of the announcement with many suggesting that instead of amending the policies surrounding gender and registration, Parkrun just decided to get rid of all the records for ease instead. But, as you would probably expect, Parkrun are making it very clear that this was no motivation for them making the changes. Comments such as there is no hidden agenda at play were thrown around in Russ Jeffrey's open letter, promising that his decision was in fact made to remove the barriers to participation. With regards to factors such as the fear of finishing last, being slow, or not even finishing at all. So, given that Parkrun are claiming that the real reason for making these changes was to make Parkrun a more inclusive and welcoming environment for everyone to enjoy, how do Parkrunners really feel about the changes? For the past two Saturday mornings, I've headed down in the pouring rain to my local Parkrun to find out just that. Let me just tell you, it's a lot harder to motivate yourself to get out of bed at 8am on a Saturday when you're not actually running the event, but just harassing people to speak into a microphone. A little bit embarrassing. I asked park runners whether they attend and complete in a timed event, or just to get outside and enjoy some fresh air. The responses were rather split. Um, Primarily just to enjoy and get out and have a productive Saturday, but I, I mean... Every now and again I'll, I enjoy the competitive element as well, so it's not one or the other, it just depends how I'm feeling on the day. Personally I do it more so to challenge myself, that human nature, competitiveness, it's a time event, it's a bit like a race, You're not stopping for traffic, it's the only time that I kind of try and actually run up that little bit faster. Pelly Pullinger, a regular at Halston Magpies Parkrun, rather impressively still runs Parkrun at the age of 65 claims that she attends Parkrun for the social activity, rather than because of a drive to defeat her competitors. Although everyone did have a different opinion on why they attend Parkrun, there was one general consensus. This one, quite a few people who shoot off at the beginning, and for them it is a race. Well, okay, that's fine. It is whatever you want to make it. For a small group of people, it is a race. For a small group of people at the back who are struggling to walk around, it's a desperately needed health thing. If people want a competitive element to it, they can have that. But I think big emphasis should be on just getting everyone active, making it free um, and getting people out running. And I think really it is just that. As Heather Houghton, a 50-year-old parkrunner said, there's room for everyone at Parkrun, from the fast people to those who do it for general health or for fun. Maybe we have just become too competitive in human nature, and the removal of the statistics might just remind us why we're really exercising in the first place. Although, I do have to say, I still think the timing is kind of questionable. Perhaps, instead of introducing such drastic changes while being in the middle of a high-profile controversy issue, they should have just addressed the accusations. Anyway, thanks for watching another episode of Hot Topics with Hannah. Keeping you up to date on all the activity that's taking our social media feeds, by storm. If you've enjoyed this episode, do let me know by commenting down below, and if you haven't, keep that to yourself, to be honest. Follow all my social media accounts, which are linked in the description box below, for more Hot Topics content. Keep your eyes peeled for the next episode where we'll be talking. Mm, Actually, I'm not sure I need to gauge what's trending first. Thanks for watching!